Bank. Mr. Delaney, please join us and tell us about how the Infrastructure Bank would work and what it would do for I will, America. I will do that. And thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, for allowing us this time this evening. And I want to thank my good friend and colleague for California for organizing our discussion here this evening and his work on Make It in America. It's important work, and it's work we as a Congress should be focused on. And I think my colleague from California knows that I'm very pass passionate about the infrastructure investments that we need to be making as a country. I quite frankly believe it's our number one domestic economic policy challenge and opportunity. And I say that for three reasons. First, it is the easiest way to get Americans back to work with jobs that have a good standard of living, which should be one of our main focuses as a Congress. Secondly, making a smart and significant investment in our infrastructure, in our road and transportation infrastructure, in our logistics, in our communications, and in our energy and water infrastructure. Making a smart and significant investment in this infrastructure will improve the overall competitiveness of the United States, which is the number one thing we should be focused on when we think about our future in the context of a global and technology-enabled world. And the third reason I favor infrastructure investments is because they pencil out. In other words, the data overwhelmingly suggests that an investment in infrastructure has a very, very good payback uh, to the economy. Just to put the infrastructure situation in this country in context, I want to cite a recent report done by the American Society of Civil Engineers. And they do a survey of our infrastructure every two years. Their report recently came out, and they provided us a grade. They actually grade each component of our infrastructure. Our cumulative grade is a country. And remember, this is the wealthiest, most successful country in the history of the world. Our cumulative grade for our infrastructure was a D+. Plus. And the civil engineers estimate that we have to make an investment of at least two to three trillion dollars to bring our infrastructure up to a grade that we deem successful. Two to three trillion dollars. In addition, there's an argument that the existing investments we make in infrastructure, even if they were to be increased, the programs that we have, the very, very important infrastructure programs we have as a country, like investing in the or, or making sure the Highway Trust Fund is, uh, is funded at the level that's appropriate and, and consistent with historical averages, even if we were to make these investments, which I clearly believe we should, and I know my colleague from California believes we should, there's still a very strong argument, or the data would suggest, that we will continue to accumulate an infrastructure gap. In other words, the amount that we need to invest in our infrastructure to make us competitive will continue to grow. And so this is a very, very significant problem. And to put this problem in further context, we need to remember that infrastructure is, a, is, is are services and investments for the common good. They're public services. And they're historically made by governments, the federal government, the state governments, and local governments. And we all know that governments are under fiscal pressure right now. Both our federal government and our local governments are under pressure. So we need, as we think about investing in our infrastructure, to not just be funding the existing programs that we have up to the levels that they deserve to be funded at, and that should be a main priority of this Congress. But we also need to be thinking about new and creative and fiscally sensitive and sustainable ways of investing in our infrastructure across the long term. Our infrastructure problem is a multi-dimensional problem, meaning there's lots of reasons we have this problem. So we need numerous tools to solve the problem. And one of those tools, I think, exists in legislation that's been filed that we led it was filed several weeks ago in the Congress that right now has 18 Republican and 18 Democratic co-sponsors. So it's truly bipartisan legislation. We also have 25 uh, groups that have supported the legislation, outside groups representing uh, uh, both parties typically in terms of their orientation. The Partnership to Build America Act creates the American Infrastructure Fund, which is designed to be a large-scale infrastructure financing capability that can finance many of the projects my colleague from California will talk about tonight, Mr. Speaker. But what's important about the American Infrastructure Fund is it's funded without any appropriations from the government. Instead, it's funded by providing corporations with an incentive to invest. Under the uh, Partnership to Build America Act, the America Infrastructure Fund is capitalized with $50 billion of capital. The capital comes from the fund selling bonds that are not guaranteed by the federal government, they're long-term, 50-year, and they pay a 1% interest rate. So they're very attractive, low-cost capital 
that if put into the American Infrastructure Fund will allow it to provide $750 billion of loan guarantees to local governments and direct loans if necessary to local governments. $750 billion of funding capacity. Over a 50-year life, we expect that money to turn two to three times, and so that could be up to $2 trillion of financing without any appropriations from the federal government. The $50 billion that capitalizes the American Infrastructure Fund comes from selling these bonds, bonds not gu guaranteed by the federal government, 50-year bonds, 1% interest. As an incentive to get companies to buy these bonds, we're proposing that they get a tax break on their ability to repatriate their overseas earnings. We've all talked about the, the issue we have with our tax code and how it's created a situation where U.S. corporations are accumulating significant amounts of cash overseas. Under the American Infrastructure Fund, they have a way of bringing back up to 10% of that capital in a way that we know will create American jobs by investing in our infrastructure. So we put forth the American Infrastructure Fund as a solution to the problems that my my uh, colleague from California is discussing as an innovative financing solution to deal with the infrastructure problems that this country has and to do it in a way that's additive to the existing programs that exist and it can be done in a way that is fiscally responsible in light of the, the uh, fiscal pressures that the country has. So this is some of the work that we've been doing in our office to advance this important work that uh, my friend in uh, California uh, is talking about this evening. Uh, Mr. Delaney, that is a, a fascinating way of bringing capital to this pr uh, program. California has numerous high technology companies, Apple and many, many others. All of them come to us, representatives from California, and they complain about the repatriation. They'd like to bring those earnings from overseas back to the United States. They've got, I don't know, maybe a trillion dollars sitting out there, if I recall the number. Uh, Maybe that's about, I don't know, whatever the number is, a lot of dollars. They want to bring it back, but they don't want to face the 35% corporate tax. So you're suggesting that they could bring that back in a way that they wouldn't face that tax, but the money that came back would be, at least a portion of it, would be used to finance this infrastructure bank. Have I got That's this right. pretty much correct here? That's right. And, and the estimates are up to almost $2 trillion of, of cash. I overseas. understated it. Two trillion dollars sitting trillion offshore. Dollars. And that reflects a significant problem with our tax code, which we'll reserve for another session another day. for discussion. That's but this thing called taxes number exactly, two up here. Exactly, which is a long discussion. But w under the Partnership to Build America Act, the American Infrastructure Fund is capitalized by selling $50 billion of bonds. And we sell them to corporations. And they're not guaranteed by the federal government, so there's no taxpayer risk. For every dollar of those bonds the company buys, they can bring back a certain amount of their overseas earnings. We estimate that to be four to one, but it's actually determined by an auction that will be done by the fund. So if $50 billion of bonds are subscribed to by some of the companies in your uh, state, some of the countries in my state, Maryland, because the district I represent, uh, part of the district I represent, Montgomery County, Maryland, has a 270 transportation corridor that is filled with uh, information technology companies and biotechnology companies, very similar to the kind of companies that are in your district. <clears throat> so some of them may be from Maryland as well. But if they bring back, if they buy $50 billion of bonds, then they can bring back $200 billion from overseas tax-free. The bonds, again, are non-guaranteed by the government, 50-year, 1% interest. So they're not an attractive investment. But the ability to bring back that money tax-free is the incentive for them to do it. They get to bring back money and invest it in our economy. We get $50 billion to capitalize a fund that could provide $2 trillion, provide the capital base to provide $2 trillion of financing over 50 years without any cost to the taxpayer. So I think you summarized it, uh, su summarized it perfectly. I think you did. Um, I was trying to grasp the, the totality of it. It's a process in which now this is a piece of legislation. It's here in the House. Uh, I would hope that our colleagues on the Republican side that control the passage of legislation, mm -hmm. even the taking up of legislation in committee, would, would look at this and go, oh, you mean we can actually build $200 million of, or $2 trillion of infrastructure over a 50-year period without any appropriation, with no taxpayer dollars uh, other than some amount that's foregone yes. in, the, in the repatriation? Very interesting. Very, very exciting proposal, and yes. I would hope we take it up. I'm sure that there will be questions about who gets the money, who decides which projects are going to be selected. 
Right. And under our legislation, the states make a determination. The uh, American Infrastructure Fund has to develop an allocation process, so every state has an allocation based on their economic size. So California being the most popular state you would, would have, have the largest allocation. Oh, I like that already. Yes, I knew you would. I knew you would. Uh, 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 enjoy that feature of the legislation. But uh, in all seriousness, we, we have had good bipartisan support. I have 20 of my Republican colleagues on the bill with uh, 20 Democratic colleagues. 18 are on it officially right now. And we've received very constructive feedback from all of my colleagues. They've all worked to make the legislation better. Uh, and we're looking forward to continue to build good bipartisan support because I think we both know that um, when the private sector and government work well together on economic challenges, we get very good economic outcomes. So I want to thank you for your for giving me this time. This uh, Mr. Delaney, thank you very, very much. Um, obviously, Maryland is very, very, very well represented with some innovative thinking from their representatives. Uh, 